Hi, welcome to Logistic Regression Training. In the previous video, we built a logistic regression classifier, but didn't have weights for an accurate model. If you haven't looked at that model in a while, it may be helpful to review the previous video. In this video, we're going to use TensorFlow to optimize our model weights to fit our data. First, we'll learn about the loss function for this classifier and implement it in TensorFlow. Then, we'll quickly train the model by evaluating the right TensorFlow node. Finally, we'll verify that our model is reasonably accurate and the weights make sense. Optimizing our model really means minimizing how wrong we are. With our labels in one-hot style, it's easy to compare these with class probabilities predicted by the model. The categorical cross-entropy function is a formal way to measure that. While the exact statistics are beyond the scope of this course, you can think of it as punishing the model more for less accurate predictions. To compute it, we element-wise multiply our one-hot real labels with the natural log of the predicted probabilities, then sum these values and negate it. Conveniently, TensorFlow already includes this function as tf.nn.softmax cross entropy with logits, and we can just call that. Note that we add a small error value, 1e negative 50 here, to avoid numerical instability problems. TensorFlow is convenient in that it provides built-in optimizers to take advantage of the loss function we just wrote. Gradient descent is a common choice, and will slowly nudge our weights towards better results. This is the node that will update our weights. Before we start actually training, we should specify a few more nodes to assess how well the model does. Correct prediction is 1 if our model assigned the highest probability to the correct class and 0 otherwise. Accuracy averages these predictions over the available data, giving us an overall sense of how well the model did. When training in machine learning, we often want to use the same data point multiple times to squeeze all the information out. Each pass through the entire training data is called an epoch. Here, we're going to save both the training and validation accuracy every 10 epochs. Note that we use the feed dict to pass in different data to get different outputs. Finally, train step dot run updates the model every iteration. This should only take a few minutes on a typical computer, much less if you're using a GPU and a bit more on an underpowered machine. And now you can see it training here, and it will be done in just a few more seconds. You just trained a model with TensorFlow. Awesome. After 1000 epics, let's take a look at the model. If you have matplotlib installed, you can view the accuracies in a graphical plot, but if not, you can still look at the final number. Here, let's do that. We're going to set the figure size so that it's not too wide, hopefully. It seems like the validation accuracy flattens out after about 400 to 500 iterations. Beyond that, our model may be overfitting or not learning much more. Also, even though the final accuracy of about 40% might seem poor, Recall that with five classes, a totally random guess would only have 20% accuracy. With this limited data set, the simple model is doing all it can. It's also helpful to look at the computed weights. These can give you a clue as to what the model thinks is important. Plotting them by pixel position for a given class, we get an image like this. And again, you can square it up pretty easily. We see that the weights near the interior are important in some models, while the weights on the outside are essentially flat. This makes sense since none of the font characters reach into the corners of the image. Your final results might look a little different due to random initialization effects. Always feel free to experiment and change parameters of the model. That's usually how you learn something new. In this section, we have installed TensorFlow onto a machine we can use. After some small steps with basic computations, we jumped into a machine learning problem, successfully building a decent model with just logistic regression and a few lines of TensorFlow code. In the next section, we'll see TensorFlow in its prime, deep neural networks.